Hi, welcome to Pencil Bank in our interview with Swipe. My name is Marcus Almerud and I'm an analyst here at the bank. Today I have with me the CEO of, of Swipe, Robert Pushkaric. Hi, Robert. Thank you. Very welcome and, and thank you for coming and talk to us. Uh, maybe let's start by giving an overview and a little bit about what what Swipe's offering, a little bit, a little introduction to the company to, to the start. Swipe, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so, so we are a company that is offering a complete uh, biometric system on card solution, uh, which then consists of, of everything that you need in terms of hardware, software, operating system, uh, manufacturing processes uh, in order to make a fully functional credit card, payment card that is biometric, right? So you need to put your thumb on it to make it work, which means that you are significantly in enhancing the security. However, the same cards from a technological point of view can also be used for, for access and entrance solutions. So it's a, it's a, it's a complete one-stop shop offering uh, on what the card manufacturer needs in order to develop a fully functional card. And let's let's maybe we, we, we question we dig into the two areas separately. So mm -hmm. let's yeah. maybe we start with the payment cards. Mm -hmm. And and I think it, it it could be confusing exactly where you are in the value chain. So mm -hmm. let's start there. Maybe where are you, where, where exactly are you in the value chain? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean the value chain. If we start then by describing the value chain of of uh, payment cards and and the pay industry, so to say. Uh, I mean, on, on, on one hand, you have the component suppliers, which means the, the hardware and, and different type of software components that you need to supply, which then would consist of a fingerprint sensor, a secure element, which means an, an ASIC that you need to supply. Uh, it's an inlay uh, and it's different type of, of software, including an operating system that you need to have, right? So, so that's like on one end. Uh, then the next step would be uh, the card makers, the SCMs, right, um, which is our kind of primary customer. Uh, then after that, the value chain is purse bureaus, uh, and 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 on, to SCMs that is our customers. So this is where we provide our our technology uh, as a complete solution, complete offering, uh, selling both hardware, software, and services in in one go uh, to the card makers. Uh, the next step would be the, the personal bureaus, which are the ones that are personalizing the card. And, and of course, they need uh, help and, and advice with, uh, you know, what do they need to do with uh, the software that is loaded on the cards to make them work as a biometrical cards. So, so for instance, you want to remove the threshold for not having to punch in the pin code when you're buying for more than 45 euros, for instance, because it's a biometrical card and we know that it's you that are buying, so you don't need a pin code anymore, right? So we work with the, with the personal bureaus as well. The next step in the value chain will be the payment processors. And, and of course, uh, when introducing uh, biometrical payment cards, you need to do some adaptation, small changes in the back end of the, of the network to make this kind of a, a very nice flow uh, and user experience. So we worked with them as well. And then ultimately, even if not our direct customer, you have the issuers, meaning, the ones, the banks that are issuing the cards uh, to the end user that will, you know, like you and me, we have, we have our, our payment cards in our hand, in our wallet. Uh, so we work with them as well. And, and uh, what do we do with them? We, we help them to calculate the business cases. Uh, we, we share different type of, of um, experience that we have made in other markets. Uh, and, and ultimately uh, work with issuers then to bring them to our customers um, the SCMs as well. So we work both in a push and pull way, if, if you put it that way. Um, and, and, and our place is then uh, in the value chain, you would say, uh, very much being the in-house uh, company for, uh, for system expertise, for R&D, uh, for the tier two and tier three SCMs of the world, while you have the big ones, which is like tallest, Idemia and GND, right? Mm -hmm. So all the other SEMs in the world mm -hmm. uh, are potentially then our customers, uh, companies that are making cards. 
So you basically, if I get you right, you you, you do what Talus and GND and Idemia are doing. Yes. Uh, that for the tier two and tier three who doesn't have the same capabilities and you deliver the technological platform that goes into the card. Co correct, correct. So, so, so the tier two and tier three SEMs of the world, mm -hmm. they, don't, uh, they don't have the capability to kind of design uh, or, or develop their own operating system mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and to glue together the complexity of a solution, which is then the secure element, the operating system, the inlay, uh, and the fingerprint, right? So, so, so we select the different components, uh, make it work. We bring it to certification, right? So, so we bring it to MasterCard and Visa, get it certified by the payment schemes that are the dominant ones in the world. And, and, and then we can go to the SCM, uh, tier two and tier three, and say that we have a functional, fully functional and certified solution, which is a system on card solution to the SCM. So they can make cards, right? Uh, and then we will assist them in every step of, you know, fine-tuning the machinery, uh, get the, the, uh, the yield up, the throughput up, uh, and, and also assist them in all the, the discussions that they need to have with personal bureaus, payment processors, and their kind of ultimate customer, which is the issuer that will issue the cards. So we assist them in every step of the way, and, and that's rather unique. Uh, so there is no one else in the world that today have a, a system integration perspective with hardware, software and services, uh, taking full responsibility in the value chain to help the SEMs that are buying our technology to actually make it work uh, with the issuer. And you have a partnership with Idemia, yes. which is one of the big three yes. card manufacturers. Correct. Uh, talk a little bit about that and how, first of all, what's in that relationship uh, and, and how important it, is it for you? I mean, it's 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 very important uh, um, relationship, and, and we have co-developed the solution that we are selling, which is the one in many aspects that Idemia is selling as well, right? So, at the same time as we are R and D and co-development partners, we are also competitors in in the open market space. Uh, Idemia, of course, have considerable resources in-house to do their own R and D. And, and we are then acting as the R&D house for the tier two and tier three SEMs that are in reality competing with, with Idemia to win those issuing banks out there in the world. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk a little bit about the market because this is an emerging market. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there are not many people today who have biometric payment cards. Correct. Uh, so how do you see this market developing? And, and let's talk a little bit about timeframes as well. Yeah, um, this market is, I mean, to start with, I mean, you have some 2.5, 2.6 billion payment cards being issued every year on, uh, on, on the current technologies, right? And, and, and that would typically then be what we call contactless cards. Um, and and uh, we believe, of course, that eventually a majority of the contactless cards will be biometric contactless cards. Uh, simply because it enhances the security uh, and, and it still doesn't require that you ever basically touch uh, the terminal to punch in your, your PIN code. Just, just thinking about kind of COVID and you know, you don't want to touch things. So, and you don't have to, not even over 45 euro. Um, so, so, so the market is huge and, it, in, and it's expected to, to grow. So by, uh, by basically 20... Uh, 30 or 2026, 20, 28, the market will be somewhere around 3 billion cards annually. So, so on the contrary of what, what many people think, that the number of payment cards out there will actually decrease, that, that is totally wrong. I mean, the number of cards that are being produced and shipped, issued every year is just, just increasing. And, and, uh, and what we see is that, yes, some markets in the world have a kind of high percentage of uh, mobile phone payment or wallet usage, but most of the countries in the world, that is pretty small still and will remain pretty small because, because banks, of course, don't want to share uh, the revenue that they are getting from, from the transactions. So if they can have cards that are more reliable, more secure, they will push those offerings rather than, than just push it via mobile phones. Uh, 
talking about deployment and growth of the market, uh, I, I think that, I mean, in 2022, uh, we saw that the number of, of uh, uh, pilots were dramatically being increased. We also saw that there were some more than 10 commercial launches around in the world. But, but just thinking about, you know, any technology that is brought to market in, in any given industry uh, is just kind of being deployed and ramped much, much faster for every generation, right? Uh, and, and, and you can take like uh, software as a service, something that like took, the time it took to kind of accumulate it, come up to $100 million in, in recurring revenue, took like for ages before. Today, that some companies can achieve that in one year, right? So, so, so to give you examples of our industry, I think that not talking about money, but talk about, talking about when will we hit 1 billion biometric payment cards that are being issued per year? Because that, that is like a, a number that you can keep in mind. Because let's say the market is 3 billion, we want to reach 1 billion a year uh, being biometric. So when introducing a chip and pin, we all remember that before we could you know, tap the cards, we had to insert the cards and we had to kind of uh, punch the, the, the pin code. That, that was introduced in 1995, the first time the market ever saw a chip and pin. Before that, it was only kind of the magnetic strip, right? So that took 18 years to scale up to 1 billion. And then the next kind of technology evolution was the contactless cards, which were introduced in 2007. That took eight years, so 18 versus eight. And it still only took eight years, you can say, even if you had to change all the terminals. So, 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 so the point of, of contact where you, you know, tap your car, the terminal that is in the store, they didn't have contactless capabilities before. So, so all the terminals in all the stores in, in the whole world needed to be changed for contactless cards to work. Still, it only took 10, eight years to reach one billion cards annually. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you can say that uh, these cards are now being introduced, starting point 2022. And why not half it again? So say that it took eight years, this will take four to five years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so 2026, uh, 2027 time frame, mm -hmm. one billion cards a year. Uh, and why? Because it doesn't require any change in infrastructure. The, the, the terminals that are out there are good to go. We don't need to change that. We just change the cards. Yeah. So the next cards that, card that you will receive from your bank will be a biometric payment card. And off you go. Mm -hmm. and, and a follow up on that. What, what speaks against this scenario? Are there, is there anything in your mind? I mean, what, 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 one, one could, I mean, the, the, the the most common kind of argument that you get is, of course, the mobile wallets, right? Um, I, I, I don't believe that uh, when, you, when you have the capabilities of secure and safe cards, uh, people tend to use them. And, and we see that people are, are, are using the, the biometric payment cards more than the normal contact, uh, uh, contactless cards mm -hmm. when they have one. And secondly, for every card that you have, you always have a, a physical card as well. So, so I mean, uh, even if you would use mobile uh, wallet, you have the same physical cards as you have accounts in the bank, right? Uh, so, so, so there is no point in that cards will cease to exist. Uh, it's actually on the contrary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you mentioned, I think, I think you mentioned earlier in our conversation, but you've said before at least that 2023 will be the year when this will take off, when the market will take off. What do you base that on and why do you think so? I think um, two parameters. I mean, one thing is that the, that the technology is, is, is fully ready. So you have a technology aspect where it's becoming kind of mature, right? So, so uh, uh, and that's not only us. I mean, you can also look at the, that all the tier ones, the, the Idemia, Stalas, GNDs of the world, where are they and how are they pushing it in the market? And then you have like the other solutions, which is the fingerprint cards, uh, Infineon, ST, IDEX type of combinations and consortia that are also gearing up and, and getting ready, right? 
So that of course tells me and, and us that, um, that there are many that are now pushing this way um, because the industry is ready and the industry wants this to happen. So there are more people talking to SCMs and talking to issuers, banks, uh, that, that, that this now exists and that it's ready to scale. And, and the other thing is just uh, the pure evidence of you know, number of pilots that have been started and communicated, uh, but also number of commercial launches, which are now around 10 and slightly above in the world. So, so of course, this is like a ketchup effect that will... Mm -hmm. uh, 2023 is definitely the inflection point that, that will mm. change this. And, and how good a visibility mm. do you have? I mean, I guess you have a pipeline and you kind of know, so you feel kind of secure in sitting here telling us that this mm -hmm. will happen, mm -hmm. right? Is that, mm -hmm. That's the right conclusion? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and that, that is, of course, the the number of engagements that we have with our direct customers, mm -hmm. which are the SEMs, but, but also the talks that we have with, with issuing banks mm -hmm. uh, and, and the number of pilots that we have in, in the pipeline. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the way I, coming back to, to, to mobile wallets, uh, because as you said, this is one of the most common questions and, and when, when, you, when you talk about these kind of things, do, do, I, ta do I see it right that I, this, the card will be complement to the mobile wallet yes, rather absolutely. than that you will have one or the other which absolutely. will outgrow. Absolutely. That's the right way to, to look at it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and finally, finally, before we move over to, to access cards, what about competition? So mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about, so you, you have the big three card manufacturers and mm -hmm. then you, you look after the tier two and tier three primarily. Yes. Uh, what about competition? Do you see anyone else doing what you're mm -hmm. doing? Do you see any risk that you will see Talos, g and 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 IDEMA coming in and then coming into your space, etc. So mm. what, what's the competition like? Mm. Uh, I mean, to start, competition is always good, right? Because if you have competition, that, that means that there is a market, mm -hmm. that, that, that people think that there are, you know, substantial revenues to be made and business to be made. So, so you like to invest in that space. So, so that's good. That's like a tick in the box. Uh, if, if we first take the, the big ones, uh, the, the tier one, the GND, Thales and, and Idemia, yes, they are, they are, in reality, you can say, not really competitors of ours, uh, but they are competitors of our customers, because we sell to the equals of them, right? But they are tier two and tier three. And, uh, and yes, they are big giants that, that are global, uh, they have a global reach, but, but we also have our customers that are, uh, you know, can be pretty dominant in, in their markets and also the type of customers they have. Because, because all of these SEMs, of course, have either they have more a kind of geographical regional niche or they have, you know, that they are addressing more, maybe more neobanks or, or uh, fintechs uh, out in the world. Um, so they have like slightly different profiles. And we have been pretty successful in, in signing up uh, tier two and tier threes around in the world. And, and it's not so that the tier ones will sign up the tier twos and threes. They are competitors, right? Um, and, and then we act as their in-house R&D uh, center to provide them with these advanced new uh, solutions, which is a complete system and card solution, including manufacturing processes and fine tuning and helping them to ramp up, right? But I would assume that the barriers to entry are quite high. Exactly. So, so that, that leads me to, to, to kind of the second part of the competition, which is, which is the uh, more component and OS suppliers, right, to the open market. I, I think one thing that we first need to establish is that what we have, nobody else have, right, uh, which is a complete solution that we take full responsibility for. Mm -hmm. So, so we are the, the one-stop shop uh, for the SCM, meaning that we will provide and supply all the hardware that you need, all the software that you need, and we will also help you to set up your machinery, your factory, so to say, so that you can get the nice throughput and the nice uh, yield. Um, the competitors of ours in that space would then be uh, the ST and Infineon and Samsung of the world, right? Um, and, and then I mean uh, the silicon part of, of what they do, the ASICs, right? Um, and, and then, of course, 
you need a fingerprint sensor, you need an operating system, and, and now you see the formation of different consortia, which would then potentially then become the competitors of ours, right? Uh, but as of today, we have the most advanced solution, the highest level of integration, and the only solution that is certified by both Visa and MasterCard on the open market for any tier two and any tier three to buy and to put in production. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to maybe the other area, access cards, which kind of belongs to it's the same kind of technology, but the different market. So let's talk about the access market. So mm -hmm. what is your view on the market? And maybe here also, what is your offering and, and how do you view the market in the short and long term? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the market is, is huge and, and it's like, it's not so that we are trying to establish a market that doesn't exist because we, we all have different type of access cards for the companies where we work, right? Uh, and maybe even to open the door at home or um, wherever you live. Um, but, but the access market is slightly different because the access market is, uh, the whole kind of go to market model is different than, than for pay. For pay, it's like you have the SCM, you have the uh, personal bureau, you have the payment processor and you have the bank, right? Here it's slightly different, uh, more fragmented. So, so here we need to uh, sign up and work with different type of system integrators, which are providing like security and entrance solutions where readers and cards are kind of part of the total solution and, and typically value added distributors uh, as well, right? At the same time, this is like not controlled by any payment schemes. Uh, meaning that, that you can, you can uh, do this much faster. There is no uh, formal requirement that anyone needs to approve. So uh, when you have a partnership with HID or Legic like we do, uh, then, then you can like uh, sign up the system integration partner, the value added distributors, and also work directly with some kind of big targets like airports or, or, or um, what you now have focused in in your initial kind of go-to-market uh, uh, rollout and, and aspirations. Um, and another thing when it comes to access is that the card is identical, right? So from a kind of technology point of view, we have a very sophisticated, advanced and high quality solution, which has passed all the rigorous tests of Visa and MasterCard. Uh, and, and if you pass their test, you're, so to say, good to go. Your encryption is good, it's reliable, it's durable, it's, you know. So, so of course, when, when, when the access industry and those partners are looking at us, uh, we are benefited from that we actually have payment card certificates, even if that will eventually not be used, but you passed all the tests, right? And, and thirdly, I would, or fourthly, I would say that that uh, another thing on access, which is, which is slightly different than pay, is that we also have the ability that apart from offering the chipsets for making cards for access, we can also offer complete cards because we can manufacture cards as well. Meaning that, that both the ASP of the, of, of the individual kind of piece that we sell is much higher and, and also the margin per unit is higher if we sell the complete cards, which we will do and, and we are doing as well. And, and got two questions, maybe starting with, you mentioned that the card is the same. Mm -hmm. So, and it's been verified by Visa and MasterCard. Yes, so, the core technology, so to say. And exactly, exactly. And this happened last year. Yeah. So how important do you think this single fact is, is for the market to take off, that they are actually certified in that way and a lot more complex than, than what you can get today? I, I think that that is, of course, a unique selling point for us. I, I don't think it's like uh, very necessary for the market to take off that, that, that you need to be MasterCard and Visa certified by cards. But the important thing is that the industry as such have reached the point where access cards are now, you know, as price slash cost competitive as payment cards, because the banks will never roll out this technology if you don't kind of, if you haven't brought down the cost. That, that's why you, you have reached the inflection point that the cost is, from a cost perspective, you're good to go per card, right? Before, in, in the access domain, uh, you have had biometrical cards, but they have contained batteries and all kinds of discrete components in them, which makes them 
uh, not as durable and the lifetime is not as long and, and you have had batteries inside. All of that is now gone and you can say that that technology evolution has been driven by the payment industry. So, so now when we have that product, we can reuse the same core technology product for a different industry, which is then kind of access. Mm -hmm. So that's why you will also see a shift now that these cards will start to be used in the access space. And, and I get it right, right, that the information, all the information is stored locally on the card, which must also be good. I mean, that also means, right, that you don't need to store any information centrally, but you, you can have it on the actual card. So from a GDPR point of view, this is excellent, right? So you're absolutely right in what you say. The biometrical data coming from your fingerprint mm -hmm. does never leave the card. It's only stored in the card. So, so from a GDPR compliance issue, you're good to go, right? Mm -hmm. But there are, of course, many other advantages, which means that you never need to touch any keypad. Typically, when you want to enter uh, your company before 8 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning and after you know, 5, 6 o'clock, you still need to punch the code, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need that. So, so again, touchless, uh, GDPR compliant, uh, extremely secure, so if you lose it, no one else can use it. Uh, and, and, and I think there are many other directives where you really want to know that the person entering the, side, the site or actually, uh, you know, whatever you do, that it's actually really, really you and that you have not lent your PIN code to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so uh, yeah. And you're targeting, I assume, you mentioned airports, so the highest security kind of areas. Mm -hmm. Any other areas except for airports where you're focusing? Or yeah, so, the, so the go to market that, that, that we have uh, chosen to kind of focus on is, is centered around that you pick kind of the type of places where the security demand is as at, the, at its highest, so to say. But at the same time, you want a lot of people to work in the same kind of facility. So, so typically airports, where we had uh, our proof of concept with Fraport and Frankfurt Airport, where you have some 80,000 people working in one airport. So, so of course, airports is very interesting because if you just take the, the big ones in the world, the Chance, the Gaulle, or just in Europe, or, or uh, Heathrow and, and other airports, I mean, all of them are kind of plus 50,000 employees. And, and, and you have more than 10 of those uh, only in Europe. Uh, other things is like uh, data centers, because typically that, that every client and customer in a data center want their kind of secure storage. So you have many access points, even if you maybe don't have so many people working there, because you need to open uh, all the kind of secure installations in, in different places. Um, hospitals, um, if you take Stockholm, Karolinska Sjukhuset, there's a lot of people working there and, and, and you need to know really who is where and, and who has the right to open certain things. Other things would be like uh, military applications, uh, police force. Uh, so where the security is, is high and, and you have a lot of people working uh, there. That, that, that is our primary target. Okay. Maybe a couple of questions to wrap up. You're, you're in the middle of a capital increase. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of words about that. What do you, what, what, how do you plan to use the proceeds? Um, I would say that you know the, the heavy lifting R and D is done, right? So so the solution is is uh, fully developed. So we're just kind of finishing off the R and D, you know, just mm -hmm. polishing the solution, if we put it that way. Uh, the solution is fully uh, certified by by Visa and Mastercard, and and now we are focusing on on uh, you know in improving the production uh, processes so that our customers can can get the yield and throughput up. So, so if, you, if you ask me, the, uh, apart from you know, running the company uh, like we have done uh, with, with, uh, with the structure that we have and, and, the, and the competences that we have, from a kind of R&D point of view, that does not need to be increased. Uh, so, so the money will be used for uh, primarily go-to-market, ramping up the company uh, when it comes to go-to-market, um, which then means from a commercial aspect, right, to be able to, to, to address and, and grab uh, the business that is out there and, of course, deliver on that. 
So the money is working with SEMs in order to get their production capabilities up uh, to ramp to, to be able to produce uh, mass volumes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's um, uh, working with SEMs and the pilots that they have with the issuers, uh, both to be able to address more pilots, but also to work faster and more focused with pilots to, get, to shorten the cycle of, of how long a pilot is, right? Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, the whole go to market when it comes to access. So if, if one is like ramp up pay, the other one is establish access uh, from a go to market point of view as, as well. So, so signing up more distributors, more system integration partners, but also uh, in a few cases where we have selected a number of kind of direct engagements like Fraport and, and Frankfurt, we have a few of those as well. Um, so, so that is predominantly what the money will be used for, scaling up from a commercial and delivery point of view. Okay. Mm. And so, so we don't need to build any factories, yeah. we, we don't need to go in, into any clinical tests that are expensive and so on. This is, it's, it's go to market, okay. scaling up. Yes. It's the ramping up that yes. we've been talking about. And we've been touching upon this, but maybe, to, maybe as a summary and to wrap up, uh, we just turned the page into, went into 2023. Mm -hmm. So already uh, March. <laughs> exactly, time flies. Yeah. Yeah. But what is the focus for this year, the key focus for this mm -hmm. year? I mean, to, to kind of summarize a little bit of 2022, I mean, we, we finished off R&D, right? We got, the, we got the certifications, which was like a, a great achievement by the team. We have put a lot of effort in getting mobile enrollment, right? I haven't mentioned that before, but for this market to become a mass market, especially in pay, uh, people don't want to rely on, you know, plastics and battery and stuff. They want to basically to take the, the card, take their phone, hold uh, the card behind the phone, launch a piece of software and you can enroll with your phone and you're good to go, right? So, so, so this we have now developed for, for both iOS and for Android. And uh, to my knowledge and proof points, we are the only one that have a working solution for iOS Apple that I have seen live working because we demoed it both in, 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 in Las Vegas on, on Money uh, 2020 and also in, in Paris at Trustec. Uh, so, so that is also done. Uh, uh, we have... Uh, we have helped our customers to achieve visa certification, four of them, and, and one of them is certified on MasterCard, and of course we want the others also to be certified on MasterCard. Um, so so, so uh, we have built a team, we, I'm new, uh, we have a new CFO, we have a new head of strategy slash product management. Uh, we changed the organization to focus more on what we call customer success, which is gearing up and focusing on, on customer and issuer pilots. Uh, to help them kind of do what they need to do to be able to mass produce and also to get the banks ready to launch. Uh, so, so we have done many of the things that we need to do in order to be prepared for the inflection point that is now happening, right? So 2023 is, is very much again then about go to market, right? It, it is about scaling, ramping the company to address the business that is out there and to be able to, as fast as possible, get our customers, the SAMs, ready to mass produce and to kind of, you know, adjust their machinery to be capable of delivering uh, biometrical payment cards. And on the other hand, it's, it's then working with the pilots, the issuer pilots, uh, together with SAMs to kind of make them as fast and smooth as possible so we'll reach commercial launch. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have the whole access space, which is extremely fascinating, that we really want to establish and, and, and kind of get the first deals uh, and, and start rolling that out as showcases, um, that, uh, that this is a great thing to do with current existing infrastructure, cost efficient, super fast to roll out. So, so that is 2023. And we're at an inflection point, you would say? Absolutely, in both access and pay, mm -hmm. because, because we are ready. And, and the good thing is that, you know, what we have to offer, I would say that no one else offer a complete, proven, fully certified, uh, fully production ready uh, system on card solution for biometric payment cards. 
So we, we are ready. And with that, Robert, very much thank, thank you very much for coming here thank to you talk Marcus. to us. And thank you very much for listening.